If you would like a simple, actionable blueprint to make putting together a presentation on any topic an easy step-by-step -step process that will grab the attention of your listeners and keep them engaged throughout your entire presentation, I've put together a free resource to help you. It's called Unlock the Secrets to Crafting Compelling Presentations. In this guide, I outline the simple formula that I talk about in this podcast that you can use in your presentations and talks to give you a clear structure. Ensure your presentations are relevant, interesting, engaging, and inspiring. You can grab this free resource by going to lisahugo.com forward slash E-I-E-I. -E That's lisahugo.com forward slash E-I-E-I. -E All right, let's get back to the show. Well, welcome back, friends, to another episode of Impact Through Voice. I'm your host, Lisa Hugo, and today I'm going to guide you through what I call the universal presentation formula. This is something that you can use whether you're presenting live, virtually, or recording a session that will be played back later. The beauty of this formula is it's adaptable and you can use it in any setting or to any audience. So grab a notebook, get your favorite beverage and pull up a chair, let's dive in. The formula is split into four key stages. I call it the EIEI -E formula, and that stands for engage, inform, educate, and inspire. Write that down. Engage, inform, educate, and inspire. We're going to start with engaging your audience. This is crucial because you've got just a few seconds to grab their attention before they start checking their emails, scrolling through their phones, drifting off, daydreaming, thinking about what time they need to pick up their kids or when is my next coffee break? You need to start with a bang, something interesting, something that will pique their curiosity, something that will get them thinking. Do not start your presentation with, Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and today I'm going to talk to you about XYZ. I don't care if this is what most people in your organization do and you think this is what's expected of you. It's an expectation because it's conforming to the norm. It's an expectation because everyone else does it. It's an expectation because you want to stay in your comfort zone. But that's the problem. And because everyone else does this, it's boring. It doesn't engage the audience and it's a sure way to lose their focus from the get-go. I'm going to give you some alternatives to grab their attention. Remember in the EIEI -E formula, this is the moment that you engage your audience. These are your first seconds that will make the difference if they will continue to listen or they will drop off. So, for the example of our podcast today, I've chosen a topic. It's a, a real topic, but for me, I'm absolutely no expert on it. So please, what I say is not necessarily factual. I've chosen the topic of cloud seeding, particularly because it's been in the news here in the Middle East quite recently, and we've had a lot of rain. Now, this could be a really boring presentation using facts and figures, or it could be a riveting, informative topic that intrigues my listeners. It all depends on how it's presented. So let's go back and highlight again how not to introduce your topic. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa, and today I'm going to talk to you about how the UAE uses cloud seeding to enhance the rainfall in the region. Now, I don't know about you, but I would have immediately switched off at this point. To me, that sounds boring and non-interesting. Here are some better options to engage your audience. You could start with a fact. Here's an example. In 2016, California was battling one of the most severe droughts in history. A total of 7,349 fires raged across the state, threatening wildfires and homes. When El Nino brought storm clouds in over the state, officials saw an opportunity. An opportunity to make it rain. The UAU has been using this technique for the past 14 years. So today I'm going to share with you. And then you move in to the inform section of your talk. Much more interesting, right? Here's another option. 
you could use a story. And this is a real story that happened to me. I want to take you back to January 2008. I'd been in the UAE for just six months and I just returned from a trip to Australia with my family. It was cold. It was drizzling. The forecast predicted thunderstorms. I thought, okay, no big deal. We get rain all the time where I'm from. I wasn't prepared for what would happen that night. I wake up to the sound of heavy rain, but it doesn't sound like it's raining outside. It sounds like it's raining in my bedroom. I get out of bed and I find myself standing in water. The entire bedroom is flooded and I can hear water pouring in from a far corner of the room, but it's dark. I wake my husband. Ingo, Ingo, it's raining. Go back to sleep. No, Ingo, wake up. It's raining inside the house. The bedroom is flooded. We turn on the light. There's water running out of the power sockets. How is the power still working? How am I standing here and I'm not electrocuted? Our bedroom's on the top floor of the house. And the water is running through the fuse box, through the sockets and into the bedroom. It's running down the stairs into the bedroom of our baby. We rush to make sure she's okay and to keep her safe. And then as we look outside, we see the garage roof collapsing in on our cars. And the streets have turned into rivers. This is no ordinary thunderstorm. This is man-made rain, fueled by cloud seeding. Can you see how a story like this, which is personal and relatable, certain for anyone who's lived in the UAE for any length of time, and it makes you want to know, how did it end? Or you're questioning as well, why is she telling me this? You can then tie the story back by saying, I'm telling you this because. Cloud seeding is a technique that's been used across the UAE for the past 14 years to enhance rainfall in the region. Today, I want to share with you and then you go into the inform part of your presentation. Can you see how powerful this can be? Another idea is to start with a question or a series of questions, something like this. Did you know the UAE has been using cloud seeding for the past 14 years to enhance precipitation in the region? But does it make a difference? What are clouds actually seeded with and how does this man-made influence affect our future? Today, I want to share with you and then again, you go into the inform part of your presentation. It's so powerful how these openings can grab the attention of your listeners and then make them think, Wow, I want to hear more. That was just one topic that I chose as an example. And I was trying to use a topic which could be really uninteresting or boring or factual and enlighten how you can turn that around and you can make it interesting to your listener. But let's say you're taking a topic like productivity, a typical topic that might come up in the workforce. You could start with Did you know the average person is only productive for three hours in an eight-hour workday? Let's change that. Simple, but effective. All right, the next step is to inform your audience about what they are going to learn. This sets the stage and it gives them a roadmap of your presentation. It's like when you watch a movie trailer and you get excited about what's coming up. You tell them up front the key takeaways. You could say something like, by the end of this talk, you're going to understand how, why, and when cloud seeding is used, the positive and negative effects of cloud seeding, and you'll be better informed to make the decision if this is a technique you would want to deploy in your region. You see, I'm imagining that this is a talk to government decision makers. Make sure you know who your audience is. Obviously, your talk or your presentation has to make sense and it has to be relevant to them. So let's go back to the productivity topic. By the end of this talk, you'll have a toolkit to double your productivity without extending your workday. In fact, you could even shorten it. The inform section may also have a bit of information about why they should listen to you. What are your credentials? And I don't mean what's your resume. 
just some key points that are relevant to the topic that you're speaking about and that will highlight your experience and your expertise to be talking about this today. You don't have to be an educated expert on a topic either. You could just be passionate about it and have had some personal experiences, like in the story that I shared earlier. It could be a topic which has fueled your interest and created a desire to want to educate others. To learn more about storytelling, go check out episode six of this podcast, where I really dive into storytelling techniques. I'll share the link in the show notes below. Now let's move to the education part of your talk. This is the meat of your presentation where you dive deep into your topic. You need to break it into three or four key points that you plan to address, but keep it simple and keep it relatable. Unless, of course, you're speaking to a group of rocket engineers or doctors on a topic that they are deeply knowledgeable on. But even then, What I just said still applies. Keep it simple and keep it relatable for them at their level. So again, I'm going to come back to using stories, examples, and visuals that could help to break down complex ideas. People remember stories much more than they do facts or figures. So if I continue with the cloud seeding topic... I could use real case studies of how increased rainfall has enabled the UAE to increase farming in the region, reducing the need for imported produce. Or I could take the negative side and I could also use a story that illustrates increased risk to human life or property. A wadi that swept a car and its family away. Hail that caused widespread damage. It doesn't matter what your theme or your topic is. Just make sure you share personal anecdotes or case studies that will illustrate your points. Okay, let's move on to the last part of the EIEI formula, and that's inspiring your audience to take an action. This is where you turn information into transformation. People need to feel empowered to implement what you've just taught them. Please don't end your presentation with, in conclusion, I covered today XYZ, thank you for listening. That's not at all memorable. You've just shared a highly interesting presentation. They've been riveted. Now it's time to leave them with a feeling or a memory that will last long after you have left the stage or you've left the room. You need to ignite a fire with them. Maybe share a success story or challenge them with a question that pushes them to apply what they've learned. Let's go back to my example on the cloud seeding. And I'm going to make this a little bit personal for me coming from Australia. And for the record, I've no idea if cloud seeding is even a thing or a possibility in Australia. Here we go. In the last decade, Australia has been ravaged by wildfires and drought that's left thousands of people homeless, devastated natural forests, destroyed tourism and killed countless wildlife, all as a result of climate change. Let's take control of our future and help to protect our communities, our country and our earth. Let's make it rain. And you see how that would leave a memorable impression. Or if I go back to the productivity example, you could say, imagine reclaiming 10 hours a week. What would you do with that time? Start a side hustle? Learn a new skill? And you might notice the inspire part of your presentation is very similar to the engage part of your presentation. You can end with a fact. You can end with a story. You can end with a statistic, a quote, Or simply imagine. How you start and how you end your presentation is how you will be remembered. Even though the meat of your presentation is in the education, people remember a feeling. People will remember you because you moved them, you challenged them, motivated them to take an action. 
Speaking of the call to action, I want to spend a little bit of time addressing this. The CTA, the call to action. This is often misunderstood. It's considered to just be a sales pitch, but it's so much more. It's about giving your audience a clear next step to apply what they've learned. It could be as simple as download my ebook for more in depth strategies, follow me on Instagram for more daily tips, or even let's open the floor to questions. The point is to leave them with a clear direction on what to do next. So there you have it. This is my universal presentation formula E I E I engage, inform, educate, inspire and direct. Remember, the goal of any presentation is to make a lasting impression, not just to share information. If you use this formula as your blueprint, you'll create presentations that resonate regardless of the setting, regardless of the audience. And remember, if you want to get your copy of the resource I created to help you with this formula, just go to lisahugo.com forward slash E-I-E-I. That's lisahugo.com forward slash E-I-E-I. Congratulations, you just finished another episode of Impact Through Voice. You're well on your way to making a positive impact in the world with your voice. If you want more, head on over to lisahugo.com forward slash podcast for the show notes and all the links that we mentioned in this episode. And if you've enjoyed this episode, then please do us a favor, subscribe and also leave us a review. It really does make a difference. Both myself and my team love to read your comments and it helps inspire future episodes. Hey, we might even read your review on one of our future episodes. So stay tuned. And until next time, keep speaking your truth and making an impact through your voice.